Hello all, this is USA Wooden Railway here, and this is my first layout video. I've had this layout down here for several months now, and it's about time I did a full-on tour of it on this channel. So we're going to start here at the Round Arts, where we have a bunch of F40s, random passenger engines, and a whole lot of steam engines parked here. There's one side, there's the other. If we follow these tracks here... They lead out to the main line where we have a Union Pacific freight train and a Chicago Northwestern freight train side by side. We have another shed over here where we have Strasburg 90 parked on a siding, some Norfolk and Western J class looking locomotive, and a little short line steam engine in the shed. As we come around this way, we can see a Union Pacific freight train right here and the Chicago Northwestern freight train also right there. Goes underneath that red bridge. And we come to this bridge right here where we have a SEPTA commuter train on top. Then some other passenger train over here. Well, I guess we just call it a mail train because it's all baggage and boxcars anyway. If we go to the right from here, it leads over to this harbor area. If we go over to the left over here, it heads to the red bridge. We're going to go left first. We're going to pass this Rio Grande passenger train. Go up onto the bridge where we have a Burlington Northern freight train with two GP38s leading it. And we go down here where we have a Santa Fe passenger train. And then we pass through the, I think, Arch Bridge, what line I'll call it? They called it the Arch Bridge, but it's definitely based on the Hellgate Bridge model they made. So that's where we are now. There's also a siding right here. I'm not siding another track. It leads across this bridge where we have a Santa Fe pass, Santa Fe freight train goes over the Sydney Harbor Bridge, although Sydney Harbor Bridge in real life does carry trains, so I guess they're right in a way, but I, I prefer to call it the Hellgate Bridge because, well, it kind of looks more like it, and the Hellgate Bridge is exclusively for trains, so yeah, that leads down into that town over there, but we'll get there later. Now we're back at the junction, so we're going to take a right past this I don't know what to even call this train car. It looks like a B unit or something. So we have that train there. Cross over the drawbridge right here. Where we have this huge water area. with various ships and boats in it. Here we are at the harbor where we have several cranes working with the boiled peanuts train car. We have a Milwaukee Road passenger train right here. We have a Baltimore and Ohio passenger train. Well, only that coach is Baltimore and Ohio, I guess. The other one's just generic. Next to that, we have the Pohat... I don't know how to pronounce it. Pohat Arrow, which is being pulled by Norfolk and Western 611. Goes right past the Hotel Roanoke, which I've actually been in before, and that's where I actually got that. I think it makes sense to have the Hotel Roanoke building right next to Norfolk and Western 611. Over here, we have various over-the-track cranes, as well as this Brio warehouse right here where we have the little short line American flag box car, this Brio car, which is being unloaded. The rare Isle of Toy trains wooden train set, as well as this little short line train right here. If you watch the contest entry I made, it, may, it might look familiar. And we're gonna continue going this way now. Over here we have several trucks parked in this lot, I guess. There's a church behind it in this building right here. The track goes up here where it goes over three different, well, three, well, two different types of bridges, but there's three bridges. We can continue this way, and here we have Norfolk and Western 1218 pulling a long freight train past this pond and trees down there, and it wraps around before going up another level where we have uh, a little short line passenger train right here it goes up one more level crossing over itself before it starts to go downhill and downhill even more before we reach a metro commuter train and it curves around here's a Conrail freight train there's a siding there and goes through this covered bridge that Maple Landmark made. I really like it. I like the detailing on it. It's just nice. I'd highly recommend getting it. Track continues to curve. There's the engines on the Conrail train. 
before it crosses under itself again and we reach this town area right here where the tracks begin to run down the middle of the street here like in Michigan City, Indiana, although they're sadly removing that now. I think it looks nice. Here we pass the Bright River train station, which was not actually meant for wooden trains. It's a cat's meow wooden building, and there's a plethora of them around the layout because they just fit in nicely. There's the street there. The track continues running down the middle of the street until we reach a crossing here before it's back to regular track where we have a Rio Grande freight train, where we come to this huge area right here. We have the two Amtrak stations right here, the one made by Will Shoreline and the one made by Amtrak themselves, which the Will Shoreline one is superior. That one's like small and not the best looking. We got the Amtrak sign. We got this, I think, Brio platform right here on this plastic platform. I have no idea where I got that. I've just had it, so that's that. And here we have a nice long Amtrak train right here. Tracks converge there and we come to this area right here where we have the Brio big engine shed, which is not big at all. You can't even fit a Whittle Shortline GP38 into it. We have several engines parked in there. Across from it we have another shed holding the big boy, which isn't all that big. This other engine here. And then we have a plethora of Whittle Shortline GP38s currently parked here. As well as this Kansas City Southern Jeevo. Tracks converge once again. We go over this level crossing. And here is the Amtrak Excella on this lonely stretch of track back here. We continue along the line here we and here's another Amtrak train with superliner cars, a viewliner baggage and two ALC 42s pulling it. I'm gonna get a better camera shot of these two because I think they're very nice. There we go. Over there there's also a switch which heads into this Lincoln Log building I, I made using what's left of the Lincoln Logs I still have because most of them are gone and destroyed where we have some more cars as well as Norfolk Southern equipment being stored in there. Goes over another crossing where I have two crossing signals that are completely different. For some reason, here's a Norfolk Southern Freight Train which goes underneath the giant spiral here. Past the pond. Past the King of Prussia building. There's NNW 1218 again. Continues along the line. To the back area of the harbor area we were at earlier. Here we have a shed with a poorly made New York Central Hudson parked in it. And that wraps right back into this switch, which leads us back to the main harbor area where NNW 611 is. If we decide to follow this track and head up this way, we have a Brio streamlined pa passenger train right here. Let me get a better shot of it. There it is. And that leads back to the arch bridge from the beginning of the video, and there's the roundhouse. I think now would be a good time to cover where this line right here ends. It goes over the Hellgate Bridge, down where it turns into street running, where I have this very nice wooden New Orleans streetcar right here, as well as this Guyard Avenue streetcar, which was made by, I think, M M Muni Pals, I think? Yeah, them. It's very nice. It's one of the few, it's one of the only two wooden streetcars I have. It looks great going down the middle of the street with these Cat's Meow block buildings up next to it. It's, it just looks great. And then we're back into the harbor with the Milwaukee Road passenger train. So that is pretty much the entire layout. I'm going to get some shots of it from above so that way... You can just see how large it is. Here's a good view of the mountain spiral right there. There's a weight there because when people open this door they always hit it and it falls over and I'm getting sick of that so 
that's there as a defense because this whole entire thing will collapse like dominoes and I have to rebuild it, which can take somewhere between 10 and a half hour, depending on how severe it is. There's a little shortland passenger train again. There's the wrap around the lake. There's that area again. I was planning on getting like some sort of shed and putting it there, but there's not very much space there, and I could only fit an end, a stall, like a, so it, the only way it would look good is if there's like a two-stall shed there, and there's like very few on the market that look good, so it's just going to be empty for this layout. There's more cat's meal block buildings along the wall back there. There's the sheds again. There's more right there. So, I think this is a great layout, and I think I'm going to conclude the video. Thank you for watching. If this layout looks familiar at all, that's because, well, I've used it in previous videos, and on my main channel, Western Ohio Interurban History, there's other layout videos of this exact layout, which were filmed months before this video was showcasing what it used to look like. I'd recommend watching those, too, if you want to see, like, an evolution of this wooden layout so yeah thanks for watching if you like this video don't do anything i don't really care bye